Hello there, I'm Ann Medina and welcome to History on Film, a discovery of our past through the movies. During any lead up to the Olympics, there are all those stories about athletes training for years to compete and carefully pacing themselves so their physical skills peak at the games. But every so often, an athlete or a team gets a late start and doesn't devote the kind of time most coaches feel would be mandatory. And they surprised the hell out of the experts. Well, in 1948, Canada did that by putting together a very last minute hockey team, not from the existing league teams, but from the Canadian Air Force. In one of their first practice games in Ottawa, they were trounced and boy did people laugh at them, but they won the gold. Another team that followed a similar path and achieved a miracle on ice was the U.S. hockey team that competed in 1980. Unlike the NHL players that current Olympic teams can include, the U.S. team back then was made up of real amateurs, college players and kids who had never been on an airplane. And they were chosen, trained, and tested in an incredibly short time. This was the team that was planning to take on the mighty Soviets. People thought it was a joke. The Soviets had won gold in five of the last six Olympics. By contrast, the Americans were ranked seventh. Stay with us after the film when we'll talk to someone who has played the game, studied it, and still shakes his head at wonder at what the U.S. achieved. Miracle on Ice is brought to you by Scudder Funds of Canada. At Scudder, we never forget it's your money. This dramatization is based on the actual events leading up to the 1980 United States hockey team's performance at the 13th Olympic Games in Lake Placid. In some instances, composite characters and time compression are used for dramatic purposes.
What time is it? I'll get breakfast. Relax. I've got Patrick picking me up. We'll grab a bite. Were you up all night? The truth. Last chance to decide who to invite to camp. That was yesterday's excuse. Can't use the same one twice. We delayed sending out the invitations until today. Pat, I've got 68 kids trying out. I've got a couple of days in camp to decide what 42 I'm going to send home. And then I've got six and a half months to put 20 of those kids up against the Russians. You didn't have to take this job. What if I make a mess of the whole thing? I'll still be here, as always. You're worried, right? Worried? What, me? Worried? <laughs> yeah, I'm worried. Donna, I'm a hockey player. I need to get noticed. Okay, so the pros know I'm here, but they're looking for me to prove that I'm good enough, that I can do the job. If Brooks will give me the chance, Donna, I can prove it. And if I can get there, if I can get to Lake Placid, you'll see. How long are you gonna wait? I don't know. I'll tell you after the mail comes. upset with your brother he tried to get to it first I oh, know but then I'm sorry it's not like I was trying to hide it it's just that I wanted to wait to hear what the pros might offer there'll be time enough to play with the professionals it costs money to keep me playing amateur a little more won't hurt you've spent enough already I'll be the judge of that Don't... okay okay I'm watching the play where I got nailed in the corners. You never give up, do you? Can't all be naturals. So did you get one? Haven't checked yet. I saved you the trouble. Congratulations, we're going to camp together. Getting better, Pavlich. You're only an hour late this time. The picker roll were running. What did I tell you? Fishing. Hey, look, it's between you and fishing, Harrington. You come in second. Well? Well? Well, what? Did you get the invitation? <laughs> All right. Get a go. Hey, baby. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey. How does it feel to be going? It's what I want. You know that. Are you okay? Yeah. It's still hard to believe that Ma's gone. It's hard on all of us. The price to you and the family. It's like it's asking too much. Well, it isn't really you that's doing the asking, is it? I mean, it's her. It's what we promised. Just do her proud, that's all. Just do her proud. Wow, 
this place is awesome. Makes me feel like I'm Cox. These guys make me nervous. Uh, they're all right, Silky. <laughs> there was a lot of them in the Moscow tournament. There's too many of them, not enough of us. Oh, it's a big country, boys. We gotta make room for some of them. Like maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen most of these guys before. It's okay, Kenny. They've never seen you before either. They're Easterners. They never leave concrete streets. The gold medal team of 60 was loaded with guys from back east. Wonderful, Coho. A history lesson. That's what we need. Wow, did you learn that in college, Coho? <laughs> hey, did you see McClanahan's jeans? I'm not into checking out guys' jeans, ba. Yeah, he's got one of those very fancy brands, 60 bucks at least. So what? He plays good hockey. Yeah, I know, but what's a rich kid doing playing hockey? Hiya, Les. How you feeling? A little nervous. A little nervous. Some of you have had the pleasure of playing on my teams before. I guess you're all expecting the standard speech. You look to the right of you, look to the left of you, and one of you will make the team. Not this time. Nope. This time, the odds are much worse. I suggest you look two places to the right of you and two places to the left of you, and maybe none of you will be here. And there are nearly 70 of you here. And only 20 of you will have the privilege of wearing this country's Olympic colors. And they will be the best of you. The best skaters, the bravest, and the ones who believe in themselves and can trust the other man, and he in turn can trust you. I'm not looking for guys determined to be winners. There are a dime a dozen. I'm looking for guys determined to prepare for the chance at winning. And if I can find 20 of you like that here, you'll be pretty lucky. Faith in yourselves, trusting the other man, and the desire to prepare, no matter what the odds are on the outcome. I don't know what brought you here. Only what can send you home. Now, you can quit any time you like. Or you can be cut from the squad. And sooner or later, all of this will be in the hands of 20 of you. The final 20. So believe me when I tell you, they will be the best. This country deserves nothing less. If you have any questions, you can ask Craig there, Craig Patrick. I'm only interested in your answers. They look eager. Bunch of little clicks, long way from a team. Welcome to Colorado Springs, where the atmosphere isn't just friendly and warm. It's downright hot. <laughs> Are there any questions? Call your cable or satellite company today to order history television. I see the people from Scudder have arrived. Jet propulsion. It'll decrease flying time from 30 to... 50 percent. I read the reports. This is incredible. At Scudder, we established research to help determine the best long-term investments. Do you realize what this will do for commercial flight? Today, it's still an important part of the way we manage our mutual funds. Can you take us up? But what if it doesn't fly? Then we don't invest. For over 75 years, we've never forgotten it's your money. Scudder Funds of Canada. Call 1-800-850-FUND. Just one taste at Country Style. 
It's a great day. How about some coffee and hot chocolate to warm you up? It's Country Style's Just One Taste the Winter Fun Contest. Wow! Collect to win a Toshiba Home Theater or Napoleon Wood Stove or drive away in a Honda CRV. Just turn up the lip on a Country Style Game Cup to win instant prizes and much, much more. It's a, taste. <laughs> That's all it takes it's a, a great day. <laughs> When I feel fresh, I can embrace. I can share. Laugh. Reach. I can shout. With always odor-absorbing panty liners, you're free to be and do what you choose. Only All Day's panty liners have a unique core and a fresh weave cover that work together to help keep moisture and odor away from you. So you can get that always fresh feeling every day. I can let go. All Day's panty liners from Always. Feeling fresh is being free. When you need to stop a cough, get fast-acting, long-lasting relief with Vicks Formula 44. One dose coats your cough-irritated throat to start soothing in five minutes and can last through the night. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, get Vicks Formula 44. Honey, check the map. Who needs a map? Blaze New Trails. Enter the Get Out and Go contest. You could win a grand prize pack including two Jeep mountain bikes, Coleman camping equipment, and a Jeep Cherokee Sport to carry it all in. To enter, look for this display in participating stores carrying these products. Dad, can Mom drive? Okay, everybody, meet a new member of the Sprint Canada family. Say hello to Lori. I'm here because my life revolves around my local phone company's long-distance restrictions. Waiting till the weekend, nights. Well, you're in the right place, Lori, because... 15 cents a minute, no restrictions. I know, but this no restrictions thing, this is going to be a big adjustment. Any day, any time, to anywhere in Canada. It's easy. You already took the first step when you joined Spring Canada, and it didn't cost you a penny. I told myself joining was going to be a hassle, but it was easy. I was in denial. Sometimes I just want to tell the world, call Spring Canada. It's free to join. Percentages, minimums, let them go. 15, 15 cents, cents a minute, minute. no restrictions. Oh, I want to hug all of you. I was afraid it might come to this. Get the most for the least from Spring Canada. Call now at 1-800-720-MOST. As Napoleon's forces ravage Europe, a desperate army needs a hero. You can walk away from him, or you can stand behind him. But don't ever try and get in his way. Who is an officer? My men are all crack shots. We call them chosen men. They never miss. Even if he is not a gentleman. I'll be back soon, Lewis. And when I come back, I want you in my bed. Sharp. Sundays at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific on History Television. You would trigger Canada's most explosive spy scandal. A Soviet agent confessed a gigantic Russian espionage network. His defection exposed a plot to steal the West's atomic secrets. Now, never before seen pictures of the man behind the mask. An exclusive look into the secret, hunted life of Igor Guzenko. Turning Points of History, Tuesday at 10 on History Television. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Eruzioni, Mike. Next. Callahan, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Craig, Jim. Look at the camera, Jim. Next. Moro Ken. Who was that? Moro Ken. Thank you. Next? Schneider. Buzz. Next. Jose Less. Next. Thank you, Les. Hand, Rob. Thank you. Pavlich, Mark. Harrington, John. Hey, Lester. Uh, it does look like much competition. Uh, it's a good thing. I'm still tired from the trip. <laughs> Thompson, Steve. Next. Parodies, John.
Baker, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Took the words right out of my mouth. What is this, a hockey camp or a rehearsal for the ice capades? Relax, coach. There's got to be 20 great ones in that line. Good. When you find out who they are, let me know. Meanwhile, will you get them started? Sprint some memory. Work them. Work them hard. Taking the kids to the movie. All right, on a scale of one to ten, give me Grazier. Nine. Nine and a half. Dependable in the clutch. Who can back him up? It's Johnson. And Paradis. They're both talented. Yeah, but are they tough? Will they stand up? Fifteen seconds. Come on, come on. Fast. Not fast enough. You guys think you can beat the Europeans skating that way? Let's go. Hit your spots. You tell him to put his heart in it. Parody's a shirking. Come on, Herb. He's one of the best skaters out but there. But he's not giving us 100%. <clears throat> you tell him I want no loafers on the forward line. Come on, let's go. 45. Let's go, let's go. Hello, Herb. You got a little time later. I'd like to talk to you about one of my clients. Grazier? Grazier's lawyer. Get him out of here. It's a waste. A total waste. The only reason he came to camp is to make the pros think he didn't need them. I'm sorry, Herb. It's just one guy. I can't be everywhere. Well, you've got to be. Patrick, you're my eyes and ears with this bunch. I thought we had a deal with the lawyers. Who's next? Herb, most of what the guys tell me, well, it's like over beer and confidence. Really? Well, you better get it through your head that you're part of management now. I'm not asking you to be a spy. I'm asking you to do your job as my assistant. And if this bunch is going to disappear on me, let me know so that I can quit before I get fired. Morrow seems firm. But that might change. He's getting married in two weeks. The Eastern guys, they're all borderline, especially Craig. He's hard pressed financially. Well, if he's turning pro, he's going to the Atlanta Flames. They own him. Is he talking to them, phoning? No. But that doesn't mean anything. He's represented by lawyers. Who, Kaminsky? No, Bob Murray. Same thing, damn it. They work together, Patrick. I thought they promised to keep these kids amateurs. So far, so good. Right now, they're telling the guys to stick with it. See what kind of a team you come up with. So now I've got another set of guys to answer to. Lawyers and agents. They're part of the business, Herb. I mean, we got to face it, our best guys have other choices, and they know it. Guys with choices on their minds don't help us one bit. This has got to be the only thing in their life, not choices, this.
player? Uh, I'm a ghoulie. You alone? Well, if you don't count the 20 odd hockey players roaming around this place, yeah, I guess you can <laughs> say I'm alone. Hey, Craig, shouldn't you be in bed? Uh, it's a thought. Yeah, well, uh, Mary is my friend. Oh, oh, yeah. You, uh, well, any friend of yours, Thompson's a friend of mine. Get lost, Craig. <laughs> Shall we? Move it, or I'll move you. Thompson, you're such a jerk. Let me tell you guys something. I think it's time for a pep talk. All this stuff that you guys are up to right now is... No, forget it. You guys are already acting like big time. I know, some of you have got big-time lawyers, some have big-time offers. So I guess a college coach's pep talks won't work. Uh, Mr. Brooks, I think it was just a misunderstanding. Mr. Brooks is my father's name. I'm Herb. Yes, sir. One more X, and you guys are going back where you came from. I can lose a lot of good players that way, maybe. But you're already making a name for yourselves that'll keep you out of pro hockey forever. Understand me and understand me good. Nobody is indispensable. Nobody. I want a winning team, but more than that, I want a team that I can be proud of. I want men on that team that have character. I would rather cut you all and be embarrassed and be shipped down to my old job than to win with a bunch of kids who would dishonor me. And themselves. Nothing is worth that. Now get out. Some of them are barely old enough to vote. They're just kids. Exactly what the Russians think about them. So that's one surprise we can give them. Show them some kids with character. Might take the edge off losing. Hey, Patrick! You got the names? 26 names on the bulletin board in the morning. Rizzy. Herb wants to see you. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah. What's he cutting, Rizzy? Hey, I just work here. Who's buying the beer? <laughs> hey, you telling me I'm not welcome? Hey, where are you guys gonna be? In case Herb wants to see you later on. We'll be across the street at Cecil's. A few beers before the cut. Think it over, Rizzy. It's my best advice. If I say no, we'll see. But if I keep you, it's gonna be for the good of the team. I need you, Herb. I'm private. Can't it wait? Just trying to do the job you gave me. I'll have to let you know in the morning, Herb. You're making it hard on both of us. Lester, maybe I got no future as a player. I'm just average. And I'm too small. Maybe I would be better off coaching than playing. He gave you a choice. He hasn't cut you yet. Oh, not yet. What about later? At least this way, Les, I know I'm with the team. As assistant coach. Yeah, that's terrific. That's a, a once-every-four-year job, if you're lucky. Yeah, but next year I could probably chase down a coaching job at some college. Oh, come on, chase down. Wake up. You're a hockey player. Let me tell you something. Smart guys hang in till the end. If you have any hope in hell of playing, you just, just stay with it. You know, baseball, football, there you're talking about big business. You know, there are lots of opportunities there, but this is hockey. You've got a chance here. Don't give up. 
Listen, if you if you can't find your name on that list tomorrow, then come to me and tell me about your uh, your coaching jobs. But until then, just keep running them in the corners. And don't quit until he fires you. In Europe, there's a place with a chocolate heart called Switzerland. Switzerland has a chocolate heart called Lindt. Lindt has a chocolate heart called Lindor. And Lindor has a soft, melting heart surrounded by a shell of sumptuous milk chocolate. So, when you break its shell, Lindor's soft, melting filling spreads and goes straight to your heart. Lindor from Lindt, exquisite Swiss chocolate since 1845. Music presents Bell Bottom Rock. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. Right, Captain Right, I'm on your mystery ship. You yet. Bell Bottom Rock has all those hard to find favorites from the early 70s. Crank it up! get all 35 classic rock hits digitally remastered into one fantastic collection. Oh, got a black magic woman. Oh, I'll be the roundabout. Bring back all those great moments of the 70s. Hello, it's me, Mr. Bojangles. will never be like this again. This Bill Bottoms rocket. Bottom Rock today. Two cassettes only $19.95. Two CDs only $24.95. Here's how to order. Call 1 800 517 9779 or send $19.95 for two cassettes or $24.95 for two CDs plus $4.95 shipping to Bell Bottom Rock, PO Box 1144 ZQ, Monument, Colorado. Or call 1 800 517 9779. That's 1 800 517 9779. Visit a world of epic adventure, timeless drama, and unforgettable faces next Saturday. What's wrong with these people? People down here feel some things are worth killing for. We've got two cultures down here, the white culture and the colored culture. Now that's the way it always has been, that's the way it always will be. Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe star in Mississippi Burning, part of Black History Month, next Saturday at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, on History on Film. Based on the true story. As a people, let's get to the promised land. The man behind the dream. I'm not a saint. I wish I were. His courage. You cannot fight with Hoover. Presidents are afraid to do it. His triumph. I'm not going to use violence, no matter who says so. And his tragedy. King. God bless you, Dr. King. Begins Wednesday at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Call your cable or satellite company to order history television now. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Okay, fellas. All right. Hold it, hold it. Listen up. Listen up, fellas. Listen up now. It, it, it's a good schedule. I mean, games in Europe, some exhibitions against the NHL. I mean, you got 61 games in all. That's uh, in five months. Now, only the fittest will survive this. Yeah, that's the point. Guy could get injured right out of playing hockey with a schedule like that. So, so join the program. Not Come if on, he stays guy. on top of his game. 
Okay, you can't prevent bad luck, but cheap injuries, that's something else. Yeah, but a pro gets paid for the risk of bad luck. Yeah, and he's insured. We're working on that. <laughs> yeah. It's personal. If you get by that, call me. We'll talk business. Herb? All right. <clears throat> uh, drink? You said you'd keep away from my kids. How come you get along so well with my partner? Leave him out of it. Who invited you here? Just common sense, Herb. That and the rumor that you need me. Of all the things I need, you're the least. The rumor you should have listened to is how much I don't like you. Well, as I see it, Herb, you are caught between a rock and a hard place. Now, that tends to make a man nervous, tight. Sometimes makes him look for something to focus it all on. And something tells me that I'm your patsy. You're nobody's patsy. A guy doesn't get to be big or important in pro hockey circles by being a patsy. Correct. I did all that, Herb, because I happened to be the only guy around who believed that American college kids could be sold to the NHL. I believed they were just as good as the Canadian kids who always got the first shot. And it isn't making me rich. I'm really impressed. You ought to register as a charity. I'd send you a couple of bucks myself. Fine. I would be just fine. Now, listen. If you are going to cut 15 of your best that we represent, will you please tell me now? I've got pros sniffing around every one of them, Herb, and those kids need my advice. If I believe you got half a chance at a good showing, I am going to tell them to stay. If I believe that the Russians are going to humiliate you, my advice is going to be to split. Get them out before you make laughing stocks out of them. Herb, give me room. Maybe I can help you. You keep playing God, you're going to find yourself with an empty locker room. Now, I'm doing my job as a lawyer, as a player's rep. Maybe in your head. But what about here? What about your heart? Law or athletics? Kaminsky, I'm inviting you to join this squad as an honorary member. Put it on the line for the team, just as though you were wearing the skates yourself. This is no ego trip for me. You know as well as I do that no athlete ever made it without sacrifice. For the game, not for me. Herb, I am not questioning your motives. Just my sanity, right? All right. Let's play it straight. This whole thing, as far as I'm concerned, is a fantasy. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm beginning to doubt your sanity, too. Why me? Coming all the way out here. You, the fastest telephone in the East, coming out here? I'd like to see your cost analysis of this uh, trip. No, you're right. This wasn't a business trip, Herb. I came out here to see for myself. See what? Whether you're obsessed. You were the last man cut from our only gold medal team that could cloud your judgment. And? I think you're crazy like a fox.
just don't believe it. Paradise, we warned you. You just weren't putting out. I'm sorry. Don't be. You guys are just wasting your time. I mean, the Russians are going to beat you so bad. Donna, I swear, I'm terrific. No, I haven't seen it yet. Hey, Rez! Hold on. What? We made it. We're still on the team. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, Well, at least I won't have to put up with you anymore, Craig. Thompson, you got anything else to say? Yeah. Good luck to you. Good luck to all you guys. I wish the hell I was going to be with you. Jimmy? Jimmy, what are you doing here? Danny told me you're taking out a loan. Well, it's nothing big. It's just something to tide us over. I can't let you do that. Well, it's not your business, Jimmy. This loan so I can play in the Olympics, right? Look, it's what you want. It's what the family wants for you. The family can't afford it. That's between your mom and me. You can't speak for mom. Yes, I can. She was there when you dreamed it. She was there when we planned it. And she'll be there when it's done. Thanks a lot, Keith. Mr. Craig? I can't let him do this. What can you do? Here's your phone. There's one right over there. What did he say? Well, it's a pity. It's a damn pity. Bye. Phone wake you up. I'm sorry. It's OK. Oh, I feel like a hospital patient. I just woke up for a sleeping pill. It's after 2 o'clock. Pat. I've never given up hope, never in my whole life. But this time, it's too depressing. The problems are just too depressing. I don't know who I'm still going to have around come February. I just keep wishing it was over, done with. What happened? There was a lawyer on the phone. Craig's family is strapped for money. He wants to turn pro. He feels that's his only choice. Can I tell you what I think? Go ahead, shoot. Tell me. Stop worrying about next year. Make a team out of these kids. Take it moment to moment. Craig can't be the first boy in Olympic history to face money troubles. There are solutions. Well, that's simple, huh? Yes, if you're determined. If not, quit. Quit? Well, at least you've given me my alternative, haven't you? Quit. The third choice is to come to bed. Now that I'm awake.
You see, the uh, Russians make all their players army officers. While we, in turn, we... Yes, yes. Um, this is not quite my department, but... I'll see what our Mr. Sears said. He's in advertising and publicity. Uh, yes, may I speak to Mr. Sears, please? Craig will be living with the team doctor, so he won't be paying any rent. But without corporate help, we can't compete. Like the ad says, America doesn't send athletes to the Olympics. Americans do. Yes. Ah, yes. Well, I think this is more for Anderson. He's VP, Community Relations. Are you sure these players will make the team? It's never easy to dismiss personnel, but sometimes... The 1960 squad, the one that actually won all the gold. I was the last man cut from that team. They didn't handle that too well. Now, if these players weren't sure bets, I'd let them know right now. I wouldn't be running around looking for a sponsor for them. Well, the president of our division was a varsity player, Duluth. I think we all would have lunch. Dear men, please don't be fooled by all the heart-shaped boxes of candy out there for Valentine's Day. There's really only one, Russell Stover, with the incredibly rich blend of three kinds of chocolate that nobody can do quite like Russell Stover. It's not just the box, it's what's inside your heart that matters. Nobody does chocolate like Russell Stover does chocolate. You should have heard him when he saw Santa Claus. You had Max on your shoulders for the whole parade? Yep. All 26 floats. Oh, yeah. Right there. Uh, it's tough. What? Saying goodbye to the little guy for another two weeks. This beautiful little girl is Michelle. She lives overseas with her family in this horrible slum. Michelle must walk these rocky, filthy streets barefoot because her family is so poor, they can't even afford a pair of shoes. Hello, I'm Walter Coppich for Children International. Please, call the number on your screen now. We'll send you this information kit absolutely free, without any obligation, with a photo and family history of a special little boy or girl who needs your love. In just a few days, your kit will arrive in the mail, and you can read all about your child, her health, her family, and living conditions. You can hold her picture in your hand and learn how you can change her life by giving her important things, like a simple pair of shoes. Then if you decide to become a sponsor, your monthly gift is only $12. Your $12 a month will provide medical care, clothing, food, a chance to go to school, and so much more. In return, you will receive the love of your child and the joy that comes from giving her a chance at a better life. Each year, you'll receive personal letters from your child and an updated photo. All this for just $12 a month. This affordable program is possible because we keep our costs low without sacrificing the care your child receives. If you could help change the entire course of this child's life for just $12 a month, wouldn't you? With Children International, you can. But remember, don't send any money now. Just call the number on your screen to request your free information kit. There is absolutely no obligation. Your love and support can do so much for one special child, like Michelle. Please, call now. For free information on how to help a child like Michelle, call 1-800-621-9191. Operators are standing by. Find out how you can change one child's life with something as simple as a pair of shoes. That's 1-800-621-9191. Please, call now. I'm Lloyd Robertson, inviting you to join me Sundays for War Stories. This week, the gripping rescue of an American F-16 fighter pilot shot down over Bosnia, and how his family, his comrades, even his president, never lost hope he would survive. I am very concerned. We are following that situation closely. That's Missing in Action, the Scott O'Grady story, Sunday night at 7, Eastern and Pacific, on War Stories. 
History Television examines the assassination. I still have a dream. The mobster. Trafficking in large quantities of drugs. And the most infamous criminals of this century. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people. We heard the cries of the victims of Jack the Ripper. From their savage acts to their bitter ends. Peter Bundy was executed at 716. Great crimes and trials of the 20th century. Weekdays at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on History Television. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Okay, you guys, settle down. I want to take a head count. Settle down. Hey, Patty. Reporter guy outside looking for Craig. Have you heard from him? Uh, no. I, I don't guess he's going to show him. Just tell him Coach Brooks doesn't allow interviews. Hey, you guys, settle down, all right? Settle down. Settle down. Europe without the hot spots. I'm sitting in a railway station, got a ticket for my destination. You married guys get all the attention. Don't worry about it. She'll get to you. They're all big hockey fans in her country. She wants all the autographs. It's about time we got a little respect. Oh, yeah? Well, according to her, there's no way we're going to beat the Russians. Oh, that comes from living too close to the Soviets. It's called geopolitical absorption. <laughs> <laughs> geopolitical absorption, Robbie? That's right. There's the poet in you, right? Wrong. Political Science 401. It's a fancy term that means being scared of the guy that lives next door. Yeah, well, wait till we get him to Lake Placid. We'll see who absorbs who. Boy, what I wouldn't give to beat him. Sure would make up for a lot. Oh, it's a pleasure, ma'am. It's a real pleasure. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have it on good authority. You want details of our secret plan to beat the Russians. Secret? What is this secret plan? I saw your game last night. You'll never beat Soviet Union. Never. Let's see about that. I can't make it. 
tonight. I've got to have at least one more evening practice before the next game. And uh, I speak to the Kiwanis tomorrow. And then we have to check out the equipment. That'll take another evening. How about making it next week? How about Tuesday of next week? We can have dinner with the butlers Tuesday. I tell you, it's good to be home. I hadn't noticed. I didn't figure it would take that much time. Would you believe I thought I'd be with you, Mom? Sure. At least I believe you believed it. But I'm a realist, Herb. Probably why our marriage lasted. Is it that bad? No. Even if it was, it'd still be worth it. Pat. There is one problem. I'm beginning to think that we have a real chance. It wouldn't surprise me. Do you feel any special obligation? Why? Well, with your father on the gold medal squad of 60, your uncle on teams from 56 through 64. Okay. It has been my dream since I was a little boy to play on the Olympic team, ever since I was on bobskates on a local pond. This is the final chapter in a long quest, and I know that with hard work, competitive edge, and good old American spirit, we can outdo even the gold medal team of 60. Oh, I'm sorry. Why don't you try one of the other guys? I have strict rules. No reporters allowed in the locker room without my permission. I thought I made that clear. Got what I wanted. Oh, uh, I could use a comment from you, though. What the hell was he doing here? I can't be everywhere at once. Look at it this way, Herb. The only place that guys like that don't bug you is in Russia. <laughs> get this and get it straight. This is a team. There are no stars, no special people. And the media hype isn't going to create one. So there'll be no interviews. I repeat, no interviews. Next one will cost you a fine, or worse. Hasn't he even heard of freedom of the press? I heard that, Harrington. Maybe you guys have forgotten. Tonight we play the NHL. And they're not impressed with your eight and two record in Europe. If this was Russia, all you guys would be shipped to the Trans-Siberian All-Stars. Craig, get your act together. If you're going to play hockey, play hockey. Forget the personal stuff. Can't serve two masters. Eruzioni. If you want to end up spending the rest of your life in the minors, go ahead. Keep it up. Who the hell does he think he is? The coach. Our leader. Hey, her. Why aren't you on the ice? Figure you don't need it? Now, how much practice I gotta do, that's your decision. But the way you tell me, that's something else. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Regular heat's okay, Herb. But you're on my back, and Craig's too. Your scapegoat, miss. So? You guys are sitting around dreaming about the pros. Well, in a few hours, you're going to get a chance to play them. You're going to get a chance to show your stuff. And you're all going to look lousy unless you play together as a team. They're going to come out hitting, and you guys aren't ready for them. Somebody's got to take the heat. I told you before, if I kept you, it would be for the good of the team. Now, you've got broad shoulders. I'm going to make a deal with you. If I use your first name, the heat is on you. 
But if I use your second name, you're the scapegoat. I'm using you to get to the whole team. You can tell that to Craig, too. From the Metropolitan Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the home of the Minnesota North Stars, it's the North Stars of the National Hockey League against the U.S. Olympic team. Hey, how you feeling? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't feel ready, you know? I, I, yeah, I do. But for me, it's now or never, you know? Ready for the opening face-off now between Johnson and Bernard. Keep your head up, Johnson. It's going to be a long night for everyone. Tonight, you play hardball. This is also the home ice for the U.S. Olympic team as both teams share this arena. The U.S. Olympic team wins the draw. The puck comes down the Minnesota zone, taken there by Gardner. Poked away from him by Aruzioni, but Jones comes back to take over now for Minnesota. Jones checked in the corner. Gardner picks it up along the right wing board. Gardner's pass comes up to center ice. North starts with it. Schaefer down the left wing. Drop pass to Boyle, and his shot is deflected wide to the left. Puck taken off the boards by Schaefer. Poked checked into the left wing corner. Boyle takes over for Minnesota. Boyle will it now as Aruzioni gets knocked down behind the play. Puck comes back in the right wing corner, into the slot now, taken away and cleared up the center ice to Neil Broughton. Broughton fires it down into the Minnesota zone. Along the right wing board, Gardner takes Aruzioni into the glass, and the puck is picked up by Minnesota. In front, Jones with it. Jones pass up the center ice, off the glove there of Eric Strobel, taken away by Boyle. Boyle all alone, down the middle, he shoots, he scores! Minnesota's Boyle beats Craig in his glove side. Pavlich, Snyder, Harrington. A tough initiation for the U.S. Olympians after coming back from a 10-game tour of Europe. They have to accustomize themselves to the physical North American style. The NHL trying to intimidate the young Olympians. Puck comes off along the right wing board. Taken there by Schaefer, and he's knocked down as the puck comes out to... Eric Strobel, Strobel knocked down in the slot, gets a pass up the middle, taken there by Aruzioni. He hooked from behind, but he gets a shot off and it flies to the left side. Overskated by Apodaca for Minnesota and back to pick it up is Gardner. Gardner comes up the left side, 1-0, North Stars leading over the U.S. Olympic team. Out to center ice, long pass down as Aruzioni gets leveled at the blue line and the puck comes back into the U.S. zone. The Olympians have to get used to this physical style of play. They'll be playing the Central Hockey League teams in a round-robin schedule and also three more games the next five nights against National Hockey League clubs. Dave Christian down the right wing. Christian in the corner, Minnesota zone. He checked from behind. His pass comes out for the blue line. Watch the other side. Down to center ice. Neil Broughton gets knocked down. Sinclair checks McClanahan hard into the boards in the neutral zone. The hard checking tonight is taking its toll of most of the U.S. Olympians. They are getting very wrought up in this game right now, and they're about ready for anything to happen. Taking the body all over the ice. Puck comes up to center ice. Boyle chasing it down into the Minnesota zone. Puck comes along the board. Christian with it, and Boyle hits him from behind, and Christian drops his gloves and throws hey, a punch. It? Come on! Go ahead, what is this? This is what's called crowd pleasing. Sometimes a good kick in the butt is good for a top athlete. It helps the mold, build the team. I can't say you played well out there tonight. The score could have been worse. It could have been worse than four goals to two. But you've got to give your all, all the time. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And we still got to get down to 20 players before we meet the Russians. And they're hungry. But really hungry. I keep telling you over and over and over, if you want to do your best, depend on each other. All of you. Especially Craig and Eruzioni. If you want to be your best, then Skate together as a team, and not for yourselves. A 
think he hates you. Yeah, I get the feeling. Quiet, Mike. Yes, sir. Did he call me Mike? Yes, Mike. You heard right. Tonight, you had a chance to skate against the pros. Ask yourselves if you were ready for them. And then stop to think how tough the pros found the Russians. If you don't respect them, you can't respect yourselves. Practice tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. You look pleased. I am. Tonight they became a team. Does that mean you win? Not necessarily. But if we lose, we're going to do it together. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Just one taste at Country Style. It's a great day. How about some coffee and hot chocolate to warm you up? It's Country Style's Just One Taste to Winter Fun Contest. Wow! Collect to win a Toshiba Home Theater or Napoleon Wood Stove or drive away in a Honda CRV. Just turn up the lip on a Country Style Game Cup to win instant prizes and much, much more. <laughs> it's a great day. When I feel fresh, I can embrace. I can share, laugh, reach. I can shout. With always odor-absorbing panty liners, you're free to be and do what you choose. Only all these panty liners have a unique core and a fresh weave cover that work together to help keep moisture and odor away from you. So you can get that always fresh feeling every day. I can let go. All these panty liners from always, feeling fresh is being free. When you need to stop a cough, get fast-acting, long-lasting relief with Vicks Formula 44. One dose coats your cough-irritated throat to start soothing in five minutes and can last through the night. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, get Vicks Formula 44. Honey, check the map. It's a map! Blaze new trails. Enter the Get Out and Go contest. Woo! You could win a grand prize pack including two Jeep mountain bikes, Coleman camping equipment, and a Jeep Cherokee Sport to carry it all in. To enter, look for this display in participating stores carrying these products. Dad, can Mom drive? With so many decisions, life can get a little complicated. The Civic Coupe from Honda. It's all you really need. There is a place called Paradise. I have touched it. And it has touched me. I know this place exists, for I have seen the beauty of its islands. Felt the warmth of its beaches. And heard my name whispered along its trees. In a voice as gentle as the breeze. Leonard! Oh, bummer. Leonard. Dreaming of a tropical island getaway? Florida's Lee Island Coast. Call for your free visitor's guide to the Fort Myers and Sanibel area. She wasn't vain because she wasn't particularly good looking. Intriguing Canadians. 67-year-old architect, 38-year-old wife, and 18-year-old lover. The sinners, saints, and dreamers that shaped our nation. He didn't just stumble into power. He was constantly searching for it. An original biography series. Your father was murdered. Your mother took her life. Faces of History, every Monday at 10 Eastern, 11 Pacific on History Television. Brought to you by Royal Bank Financial Group. Weekdays, Rick Mercer turns back the clock. It is the 1960s. It is the 1960s. It is the 19 Year 1944. For an entertaining look at the history of pop culture. Well, if you don't dance, you can always grin. 
generous slices of juicy beef, natural beef gravy. And who doesn't like to eat off a lovely aluminum plate? It seems like yesterday, weekdays, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, on History Television. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Who's going to pay Anybody the most else? for my vote? Yeah. 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 Thanks. I'm going to vote for you then. Uh, I'll just put down that. Okay. Yeah? A reliable source says that Brooks dislikes him the most. More than O'Callaghan? So what do you say, Buzz? You want my vote? <laughs> hey, look, I can't tell you how to vote. But I'm voting for Rizzy. Give me a look. Oh, yeah. Hey, I don't see you flashing your ballot around. Come on. Rizzioni? Yes, yes. Oh, Rizzioni. <laughs> <laughs> Riz, who are you voting for? Hey, Kevin? Yeah, it's me, Mike. I'm all right. How you doing? Go ahead. Look, is my dad there? Uh, no, no, that, that's okay. Uh, listen, when he comes in, just tell him I was elected captain. Yeah. No, that doesn't mean Brooks still can't cut me. Look, uh, Kevin, do me another favor. Uh, call mine and tell her and the rest of the family, will you? And tell her to let Donna know she wasn't home either. Yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, okay. Good to talk to you. All right. That's Les O.J., number two for the United States, back of his own goal. The Olympians are not sharp in this game this evening. They dump the puck into the Adirondack end of the rim. That's John Kelly, number eight for the Red Wings. Kelly got it to center. O.J. breaks it up there. Watch the other side. Brooks is not happy at all with his club's performance. Here again is Kelly. Headmanning it on right wing. This is Bill Good, number 10. Good, trying to go around OJ. Good moves in on the right side, right in on goal. He shoots. He scores! Adirondack hits the lead, one to nothing. Johnson, get the line out there. Skate. Play your game. Get it back. Now, come on, let's go. Here's number 12, Dan Muckey. OJ is back. Two minutes for Trippett, the native of St. Paul, Minnesota, heads for the penalty box. I said, play your game. Skate. Or get surgery with your stick. Please. The Red Wings on the attack. Guys are playing worse every day. Right now you're playing as though you were in the middle of next month. Great. Don't think that your place is guaranteed on this Olympic squad. Busy, skate harder. Oh, and another thing, Mike. Control your line mates play because if you can, let me know right now, will you? Before we make the final cuts. All right. 
Pat can give you travel details. Unless... Lester, see me after you get dressed. It's all right, Mike. It's going to be for the best. I almost told him so myself. Thanks for waiting. Hey, I, uh, I packed your stuff up for you. Yeah, thanks. I'm real sorry, Les. It's gonna happen sooner or later. I meant what I said that night. You know, you gotta get it where you can find it. And if there's nothing for me here, I'd rather find out now. Come on, Lester, would you get off it? You've got a great future in this game. You're a player. Yeah, but not in the 80 Olympics. Win. Never slept. Not a lot. Used to get up at four o'clock in the morning, play hockey. My mother be in the kitchen fixing breakfast. She, she, she was healthy then. Anyway, used to play with the older guys on the pond. My kid brother plays right now. The older guys had cars, so I I'd sleep downstairs. I need a heater, keep warm, and close to the door so I can. Hear the horn of the car. Uh, no, he felt good being the youngest allowed to play. Except they made you play in that. Yeah. That was just when I was in high school, because we supplied the goalie's equipment. And besides, my mother figured goal was the safest place. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with the older guys. When I was a freshman. I played for Duluth against the 76 squad. Man, I thought those guys were 10 feet tall. Hey, Bob, tell them how you scored the winning goal against us in overtime. <laughs> yeah, Airbrain, for the 465th time. <laughs> <laughs> Migraine headache number two. What's number one? Quizbrooks, O'Callaghan's looking for. <laughs> hey, you guys better take it easy, you'll hear you. Let's get some sleep. stuff, you know, it's behind you now. You gotta think to the future. Future? Yeah. Uh, actually, I was thinking about my ma. I guess there's a connection somewhere. Jack, 
What happened? Look at O.C. Tipped on the bathtub, man. No. Are you going to go right? I don't know. I cracked a little slam off my femur. You going to be able to play? I don't know yet. Well, what did the doc say? Oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Take an extra. No, 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 no Jack's sure. hurt. Hey, get something for his foot. <sighs> David. No, forget the chair, Mel. Pillow's good. Yeah, just run it. Pillow's fine. Thanks. Could you maybe give me another one? Another pillow? Here, Mel. You want a drink or something? Yeah, that'd be nice. Want a drink? Yeah. Want a punch? Punch. Hey, cut the clown in. Yeah, I'm down to the final 20. In the end, there wasn't much choice who to cut. Mm-hmm, you're right. The Russians are the last game we play before Lake Placid. So I... I might as well go along with my final choices. Yeah. Bye. I think I know what it's about, Herb. There's no need to come to your office. I understand. Yeah. And thanks for everything. Yeah. Good luck to you, too. I mean it. You're gonna win the gold, Herb. Sure. Yeah. Cute. Publishing. We sell drums, fresh flowers, vintage cars. We make ceramics. We sell china. We make the part that goes in here. Fish sticks. We have computers. I know a lot about computers. No, you don't. We use computers. I just don't know much about them. Jack Squat. We need somebody that knows manufacturing. Ceramics. Flower wholesaling. The publishing business. And computers. Any ideas? The home of the saw, 
the wail of the drill, the rhythm of the plane. If you love the music of woodworking, then listen to what you get in this free TV offer. Introducing 101 Shop Tips for Woodworkers. It's filled with time-saving secrets from the pros, like a jig for routing evenly spaced dados, the trick to straightening out uneven edges, how to keep lacquers and thinners from splashing when closing the can. You'll discover clever shopmate jigs and tips that'll save you years in shop time. It's all in one handy resource, and you get it. Stop the music free it's yours free when you order cabinet making the first volume in the art of woodworking for only $9.99 packed with hundreds of full color photos and illustrations cabinet making shows you how to master every cabinetry skill and get picture perfect results at a glance you'll learn the secrets of frame and panel assembly rock solid joinery adding decorative touches like molding you can preview future volumes with absolutely no commitment to buy. Call now, and for less than 10 bucks, you'll get cabinet making, plus your free copy of 101 Shop Tips for Woodworkers. And there's more. Use your credit card and get this bonus video, Shop Secrets from Master Craftsman, free. This exclusive video gives you a wealth of expert advice and trade secrets from four master woodworkers. So call now to order cabinet making for just $9.99 and get 101 shop tips free. Use your credit card and get your free shop secrets video. If you love the sound of woodworking, then getting all this for less than 10 bucks is music to your ears. Call now. Call 1-800-435-3399 to order cabinet making for just $9.99 plus $4.25 shipping and get your free 101 shop tips. Use your credit card and you'll receive your free shop secrets video or send check or money order to Art of Woodworking, Department 9, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Monday, relive the moments. A few hours ago, I discharged my last duty as king and emperor. And experience the drama of history's greatest events, the battles that forged nations, the leaders who inspired millions, and the events that changed our world. Monday night at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, on History Presents. Explore the past online with the History Television website. It's the ultimate archive, your first stop for historical information on the net. Check out our program listings, Chat with other history buffs, play time chase as your favorite character from the past, or send a friend a historical birthday card. Chart your own course through history with History Television Online at www.historytelevision.ca. Designed by Generation Net, building web applications for results. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Sometimes it's not a sport or a business, it's an international incident. What would you give to be part of our team tonight? To be right there on the ice when the Russians skate out? A lot, a lot, Art. But not as much as you, you're frustrated, John. Come on. Hey, Art! Art! Robert? Evening, George. George. How's your boys? Oh, they're fine, George. They're just fine. Huh? Yeah, this is the night we see whether Brooks is worth the gamble or not. This is not Lake Placid, George. The teams are the same, Art. What do you say we meet afterwards? Loser buys the drinks? <laughs> the USA team coming out onto the ice at Madison Square Garden for a very important game tonight against the USSR, the final tune-up before next week's Olympics begin at Lake Placid. And this, for the most part, a team of college kids going against a club that demolished the NHL All-Stars a year ago this week at the Garden. Ready for the opening face-off out at center ice. Neil Broughton for the United States wins the draw from Perbukhin of the Soviet Union, and the U.S. drives it down into the Russian zone. Chased down by Steve Kristoff on the left wing. Kristoff in the face-off circle, passes on the left side, deflects back behind the net. Smoltz that takes the route Yoni out of the play. Kristoff with it again, out to the blue line. Held in by the United States. Pass taken away now by the Russians. Long pass up the center right. Chased down by Valerie Harlamov into the U.S. zone. In the right wing corner, the trailer on the play is Provokin. Pass to Provokin. He shoots, he scores! And the Russians have scored an early goal. in the U.S. zone in front.
but most of all alone, it is saved by Jimmy Craig. A great pitch saved by Craig at point blank range. Russians with it again. Passed out to the right point. Comes off the boards out the center right. Picked up by Silver Cota for the U.S. On a breakaway down the middle. He shoots. And it's saved by Tradiak. He got a piece of his glove on it to deflect it wide to the right side. Russians dominating the early going in this game, and they're leading 1-0. Tradiak really taking the play away from Burkota there, the U.S. first chance. Belyuletnov for the Russians, over to Pervukin, now back to Belyuletnov, across the red line. He flashes down across the blue line, left wing, cutting in, a shot and a goal! And the Russians lead two to nothing. The U.S. trying to maintain their poise and get organized, but the Russians are flying early in the game. Watch the gaps! Watch the gaps! Russians with it again. Belya Lednov's pass off to the right side. Now up to Krutov, and he scores! Yeah. Russians threatening to turn this game into a rout. At center right, taken by Sportsov. His pass off on the right side to Maltsev. Now back to Belya Lednov. Belya Lednov over to Harlamov. Cutting in all alone. He shoots, he scores! Did you see that goal? Yeah, I was there, remember? Hey, sorry, Jimmy. Class is class. Schneider. Harrington. Pavlich. You guys get all the Russian autographs you wanted? You're supposed to be playing them, not admiring them. You talking to me? Yeah, you. Mike, the team captain. Shoots it, it's wide to the right side. Rebound comes into the right wing corner. The Russians take over. Drives the puck back out to center ice. Picked up by the United States. Neil Broughton with it at the blue line. He drops the pass. Intercepted by Harlamov. He's moving it all alone. Looking for another Russian goal. Harlamov in front. Shoots. He scores. Dakota cuts behind the Russian net over to Ruzioni, cutting in, and he scores! Mike Ruzioni, the U.S. captain, puts the United States team on the scoreboard. Beautiful backhand pass and Dakota to Ruzioni, who had basically an empty net to shoot into. For once, the U.S. moving the puck like they were trained to do by Herb Brooks. U.S. trying to get back in the game. Here they come again. Pass to John Harrington at center ice. Taken away by Sportsoff for the Soviet Union. Into the U.S. zone. Down the middle. Bill Gilletnoff takes the perfect pass alone in front of shot and a goal! And the Russians score again. And there's no way Jimmy Craig's going to stop a shot like that. tell you the safe thing to do is to keep him off skates for a while. Oh. You mean there's no way? Yeah, it's best to be cautious, you know. Young guys like that are too eager. Give him an inch. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, I have a malpractice suit. Oh. Oh. Come on, let's get dressed. What are we going to do, huh? We're going to get a second opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, yeah. Doc. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I tell you, it would be like going in with only 19 players. But you've already committed to O'Callaghan. No. Until I submit the final 20 names to the Olympic Committee, there are no commitments. Herb, now you asked for help and we gave it. Now our boy is stuck by you. I'll wait till I hear from Kaminsky. Uh, that's fair enough. See ya. I gotta go too, Herb. A long day. Okay. Jack means a lot to the guys, Herb. He's worth having just for that. I know. I'll see you in the morning. Your turn. Depends on what's more important, winning or building character. For this team, the only way to win is by building character. But to give up my last chance of replacing an injured player, Hello? Sure, just a second. Kaminsky. Art? I uh, guess he was just looking for something to cheer for tonight. I guess we all was. There's gonna be plenty to cheer about, all right? It was just a sideshow. And if you're betting, man, you better bet on us. Because we're just beginning, all right? Yeah, Brooks is taking me along. All right. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. And now, wait a minute. Until I can play again, I'm going to be watching all of them. We're just about all out of second chances. Hey, we don't need any more chances. No more. Uh, just some yeah. more beers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Deli shaved black forest ham, oven roasted turkey and chicken, assorted sub. Popular downtown deli or the Winklers on Maple Street. Turn your home into a deli with the authentic taste of maple leaf sandwich meats. Deli shaved black forest ham, oven roasted turkey and chicken. Sub Express with ham bologna and summer sausage. You forgot the mustard on table seven. And you forgot your check. Maple leaf sandwich meats, taste that's a cut above. Your baby, your diapers, your rattle, your bottle, your pediatrician, your pacifier, your babysitter, your baby shoes, your teddy bear, your art collection, your in-laws, your lawn, your last date, your bank account, your pumpkin, your toy chest, your job, your clock, your wedding cake, your rubber ducky, your family, your family car, the Civic Sedan from Honda. She wore blue velvet. There are some times in your life that are unforgettable. Now Mystic Music lets you relive all your special memories with moments to remember. April love. Okay, set off, set off. Can't get used to losing you no matter what I try to do. 
Let this be your musical photo album to the past. Reminisce with 40 original hits like... the moments of your life fade away bring them back with moments to remember three records or two cassettes only 1995 two cds only 24.95 here's how to order to order moments to remember call 1-800-216-5544 or send 1995 for three records or two cassettes or 24.95 for two cds plus 495 shipping to moments to remember p.o box 1144-zq monument colorado or call 1-800-216-5544. That's 1-800-216-5544. Visit a world of epic adventure, timeless drama, and unforgettable faces next Saturday. What's wrong with these people? People down here feel some things are worth killing for. We got two cultures down here, white culture and the colored culture. Now that's the way it always has been, that's the way it always will be. Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe star in Mississippi Burning, part of Black History Month, next Saturday at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, on History on Film. Based on the true story. As a people, we get to the promised land. The man behind the dream. I'm not a saint. I wish I were. His courage. You cannot fight with Hoover. Presidents are afraid to do it. His triumph. I'm not going to use that. No matter who says so. And his tragedy, King. God bless you, Dr. King. Begins Wednesday at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Call your cable or satellite company to order History Television now. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. Two hundred and twenty million people, twenty hockey players. Just think of the odds against you being here. 20 out of 220 million Americans. Of course, most of those 220 think that a hockey puck is something that Don Rickles makes jokes with. <laughs> For the next two weeks, your audience will not only be America, but the whole world, including some nations where hockey is the ultimate test for the athlete. Well, this is what we worked for. And now we're here. This isn't a college tournament. For us, for us, even a bronze would be a victory. Even that would take tenacity, take a lot of heart, courage. I want you to stick to the 11 o'clock curfew. Keep away from women. And uh, eat properly. Try to stay together as a group.
over here. Mr. Craig. <laughs> now, here's a guy who has to get time off of two jobs to see his son. Oh, it'll be worth it, Mr. Ruzioni. Yeah, it better be. Can't stay forever, eh? <laughs> hey, not much people here. You kind of get the feeling that maybe people think that our boys ain't got a chance? Not a thing to worry about. See this? Yeah? Blonde to Jimmy's mother. Oh, we ain't got a thing in the world to worry about. Let's go. Off the opening game for the United States in the 1980 Winter Olympics, the U.S. in blue, Sweden in yellow. The Swedes slightly favored coming in. A big game for the United States, the first game in this round. The U.S. losing the pocket center ice as Helmlin comes back the other way for the Swedes. Jim Craig in the nets for the U.S. Pelle Lindbergh in goal for Sweden. It's Robbie McClanahan in over the blue line. His shot is wide. The Swedes in the corner trying to get it out. We're halfway through the first period now. Still no score. The U.S. and Sweden in the first game of the opening round. The Swedes in over the blue line. Good pass to Bolin out in front. Backhander beats Craig. And so Sweden has drawn first blood. The favored Swedes out in front of the United States at the 11.04 mark of the first period. Sweden leading the U.S. one to nothing. Take him on the board, Scotty. Take him on the board. Baker, use your speed to swing around their defense. Rizzi. Shoot out there for the blue line. Any field, the United States must win or tie to advance to the medal round. The Swedes with a puck. It's Naslin skating in on the right side, and Craig with a great save in front. Swept aside by Christian Davy coming back the other way. The converted forward in for the U.S. Over the blue line. Looks for Kristoff. Kristoff's shot is swept aside by Lindbergh. Come on now. Let's get something started before they skate us to the ground the next period. Come on. Midway through the second period with a chant of USA. goes down. Soderstrom now leaving it for Hawk and Erickson. Schneider takes him out of the play and the U.S. able to clear the zone as John Harrington number 28 skates in over the blue line. Drop pass for Pavlich and Pavlich's shot goes through the crease missing to the far side. Pavlich trying to get it back out to the left point but the Swedes take it away. Losing his helmet with Hawk and Erickson. His shot saved by Craig. Exactly one minute to play in the second period. Sweden still leading on Anderson's first period goal, one nothing. Johnson takes it away in the Swedish end. Out in front to Ramsey. Ramsey's shot is knocked down in front. And Tommy Erickson over to get it for the Swedes, trying to clear it out and does by Morrow. Down comes Lundqvist off the left wing. Lundqvist's shot is wide of the post. And now the Americans with Ramsey, number five, in control. Coming back to center right. Ramsey's pass to Silk. Number eight, goes down. The Americans with two men in alone on Lindbergh and Davy Schultz putting it in the upper right hand corner as the U.S. ties the game. So after nearly 40 minutes of frustration, the Americans finally able to break through. Hey, good game, Baker. Thank you. Robbie? Thank you. Hey, hey, Robbie. Hey, Jimmy. Just for one. Here, yeah, see? In a bit of a personal miracle. Let me tell you something. That's how we do it. We're gonna do just fine. Yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Craig. Hey, how you doing? The U.S. capitalizing late in the second period. Dean Todd, 1-1. One, one. Mark Johnson's shot is deflected by Lindbergh and hits the post. The Swedes trying to clear the end. So the Americans putting on some early pressure in the third period. But again, Lindbergh is equal to the task for tied 1-1. One, one. Swedes have shown themselves to be very vulnerable to that breakout pass. And Mark Johnson with a good hard shot. Lindbergh deflecting it to the post. Boleyn comes in, fakes the slap shot. Then his wrist shot is wide. The Swedes trying to keep it in. Soderstrom getting it in back of the net. Moline, number 23. Now Luchner, number 22, out in front. Erickson, he scores! Tommy Erickson.
points in scoring for Sweden and so just when it started to look like things might be going the Americans way the Swedes take the lead again two to one the U.S. with a late second period goal and the early pressure here in the third but it's Sweden on top in a game that's vital for the U.S. Final minute of play now. The United States still trailing Sweden two to one, and the Swedes continue to put the pressure on. The Americans trying to get it out of their own end. It's Erickson with a puck. Down he goes. Naisland shot. Glove save by Jim Cray. Give up the goalie for an extra skater. Take it easy. Cray coming out of the net for the Americans now going with six skaters as Christian works it into the corner. The Pavlich. So there is Jim Cray. His club down 2-1. There's the time remaining. Going with six skaters now. Now Harrington goes out. Tablet comes in. Slap shot by Ramsey. Is blocked in front. Baker, number six. The Schneider. Buzz. Back of the net. Fighting for control of the puck. With 29 seconds to play. Baker! able to backhand it down the ice and that will do it as the Americans and the Swedes skate to a 2-2 tie in the opening game of the 1980 Winter Olympics. Santa Claus. You had Max on your shoulders for the whole parade? Yep. All 26 floats. Oh, yeah. Right there. Uh, it's tough. What? Saying goodbye to the little guy for another two weeks. This beautiful little girl is Michelle. She lives overseas with her family in this horrible slum. Michelle must walk these rocky, filthy streets barefoot because her family is so poor they can't even afford a pair of shoes. Hello, I'm Walter Coppich for Children International. Please call the number on your screen now. We'll send you this information kit absolutely free, without any obligation, with a photo and family history of a special little boy or girl who needs your love. In just a few days, your kit will arrive in the mail, and you can read all about your child, her health, her family, and living conditions. You can hold her picture in your hand and learn how you can change her life by giving her important things, like a simple pair of shoes. Then if you decide to become a sponsor, your monthly gift is only $12. Your $12 a month will provide medical care, clothing, food, a chance to go to school, and so much more. In return, you will receive the love of your child and the joy that comes from giving her a chance at a better life. Each year, you'll receive personal letters from your child and an updated photo. All this for just $12 a month. This affordable program is possible because we keep our costs low without sacrificing the care your child receives. If you could help change the entire course of this child's life for just $12 a month, wouldn't you? With Children International, you can. But remember, don't send any money now. Just call the number on your screen to request your free information kit. There is absolutely no obligation. Your love and support can do so much for one special child, like Michelle. Please, call now. For free information on how to help a child like Michelle, call 1-800-621-9191. Operators are standing by. Find out how you can change one child's life with something as simple as a pair of shoes. That's 1-800-621-9191. Please, call now.
My skin gets so dry and scaly. Does anything help? New Lanocaine medicated powder gives fast, soothing relief. How do you cool down a heat rash? Lanocaine works three ways. Medicates, absorbs, and dries all in one. It works so fast. Lanocaine medicated powder. And out, last of the night. The pitch swung on. There's a drive hit out toward the right field corner. Henrik is going back. He can't get it. It's off the wall for a base hit. Here comes the tying run. And here comes the winning run. Showcase is world-class drama. Follow the rules. Learn self-discipline. He comes into your life. He goes out that way. And you came here because... I didn't know where else to go. Showcase is critically acclaimed films. This old gentleman offers their room to the view. I think I'm going crazy. It's everyone else who's bonkers. Royale with you. Royale with you. They should open up with the dachshund and build to the giraffe. Showcase is quality television. That's all you had to say. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. of it but it trickled through and the Czechoslovakians make it six to three with 14 24 left in the game that's Mark Johnson stealing the puck Johnson coming out of his own end Johnson over the blue line has McClanahan with him to Robbie down he goes but he shoots and scores the United States on top seven to three the greatest moment in U.S. hockey in 20 years since the gold medal winning team in 1960 at Squaw Valley just another day at the office for her. The final seconds of the game, the U.S. hockey team, a very anonymous group. Just a couple of days ago, they'll be very popular tomorrow. The crowd counts it down. That's it. A stunning, shocking upset as the United States beats the team most figured to win the Blue Division. The Czechoslovakians, regarded by many as the world's second best hockey team, losing to the U.S score 7-3. Third period, the United States leading Romania 4-1. O.C., get out there and earn your keep. Daniel Callahan coming into the game for the United States. Herb Brooks sending in O'Callahan, who has been injured through much of the early Olympic competition. The United States with a power play opportunity. Out it comes to the point. O'Callahan into Kristoff. He spins, shoots, and scores. Steve Kristoff, number 11, set up by Jack O'Callahan, number 17, picking up the assist. The United States on top now, 5-1. to one. Less than two minutes to play. The Americans with things well in hand tonight. On top by four. Kristoff gets checked in the corner. Johnson to McClanahan. Back to Mark. Now to McClanahan. Beautiful setup. And he scores. Rob McClanahan, number 24, with 151 to play in the game. The United States, seven. Romania, two. And this team, which may very well be a team of destiny, is still unbeaten. 3-0-1 the record as they beat the Romanians. The final score... The U.S. 7, Romania 2. Next up will be West Germany. George, what do you think now? Ask me after they play the Russians. If they get the chance. <laughs> Never did like it. I've always respected your opinion. Are they coming out soon? Where's the team? Aren't they coming? There's Brooks. Where's the rest of them? <clears throat> yes. Are the uh, players coming? They can't come. They're practicing. Why do you hide them at practice when this press matter is happening? Well, you see, um, they came here to play hockey, not to feed the press. This is a team. No stars. I speak with 20 voices.
First period, West Germany leading the United States one to nothing. This is Pavlich skating in through the crease. Arruzioni couldn't get his stick on it in time, and the West Germans try to clear the end and do. West Germany out in front early in the first period, and a whistle for all time as McClanahan goes down hard. Robbie taking a hard check into the boards after the play had been whistled dead. Well, come on, baby. Thank you. Well, what happened? You all right? Get the doctor in there fast. I'm going to see if he's fit before the end of the period. Back come the West Germans. Rindle, number 10, over to Sutner. His shot is wide. Johnson takes a shot at Rindle as the two come together on the near side, and now they begin to mix it up. And a whistle to stop play. And we'll have a penalty coming up. Mark Johnson of the United States going to the penalty box well, for two minutes. This doesn't look good to me. No, 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 no. It's not out of control. We've outshot them. They're only one go up. I hope so. Just 19 seconds left in the first period now. Out in front, and Keyes wins long shot. He scores. 2 nothing, West Germany. West German goal scored by number four, Kiesling. The time, 19.45. I got his number, Robbie. Oh, that's a late time. Hey, Phil, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. How you doing? You okay? Same injury as the first game. Feels kind of shaky. Well, you're going to be able to play, won't you? Yes. It wouldn't be any use like this. Come on, shake it off, buddy. We need you. I couldn't make the difference anyway. think you are are you scared to win this one scared because if you do you'll have to face the Russians well you ought to be a symbol to this bunch McClanahan too comfortable too well off you're not hungry enough who told you to change? I can't move, Herb. I can't go 100%. I'm too sore. Too scared. Too frightened. You haven't got the guts for this game. You don't deserve a second crack at the Russians. Let me tell you, you've got no guts. I'll show you who's got guts. You lousy son of a... We're gonna kill those guys, all right? We're gonna kill them! Thirteen minutes and thirty seconds remaining in the second period. West Germany leading the United States two to nothing. And to this point, the West Germans have dominated the game. Have outskated the Americans. The U.S. trying to get things started as Arruzioni gets it up ahead. The struggle. He's picked up on the blue line. The Americans are getting the puck back as they scrap for it in the corner. Johnson. To Christian, Davy, to McClanahan, running backhands and scores. So Rob McClanahan shaken up near the end of the first period, back on the ice in the second, and makes it two to one. Third period, the game tied two two. Moving out of their own end. This is McClanahan in over the blue line. Robbie skating in. Nice move in front, and he scores! Rob McClanahan scores his second goal of the game, and the U.S. takes the lead for the first time tonight. U.S. on top by one. 
The West Germans trying to get it out of their own end. Out it comes to the point to Wells. Into Bracota. Phil shoots and scores! Phil Bracota scoring for the Americans to make it 4-2 United States. It's all over now. The United States has defeated West Germany. The final score, 4-2. And so the United States goes through the preliminary round undefeated with a record of 4-0. Soviet Union and Finland and on Friday night it'll be the United States and Russia This is uh, Anna. Anna Rasmussen. Right, right. Anna, Anna Rasmussen. This is Art Kaminsky, one of my agents. Oh. Uh, what's up? Excuse me. Um, we just got off the phone with the Atlanta Flames, and I think there are a couple of things we should talk over before you get your night's sleep. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Um, maybe tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye-bye. Art, you blew it. I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> hey, you can't come in here. Oh, well, I was just going to go look at the ice. Hey, aren't you Rizzioni? The team captain, right? Yeah, that's me. Big one tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, you go ahead. It's okay. Hey, look, thanks a lot, huh? I'll, I'll just be a minute, okay? We're rooting for you. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> So far, so good. I mean, it was a big risk, but it sure turned out good. You know, the interest around the country is phenomenal. People never even heard of hockey or tuning in. Would you care for anything else? Not me. Would you? Jimmy. Hmm. No. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have you heard anything that I said tonight? I'm sorry, I... Well, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my mind off tomorrow's game. I just can't. Hey, I can understand that. No. No, it's different. It's, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. It's I can't explain it. It's, it's, I got this feeling. I just keep thinking that tomorrow I'm going to be playing for my dad. I'm for my mom. But most of all, I'm going to be playing for my country.
authentic recipe, fresh frozen pasta entrees from Nicolina's. We take the fresh pasta and a puro with a salsa. You microwave a zampa and you give a little salsa. Mucho lo reserva, casi todo mucho costa. Hey, Nicolina's. I made it from my mama, Nicolina's recipe. Yeah. Not about a mucho, but the top of quality. Yeah. Even got a gator back, a money gator. Poster, your shoes, your girl, your other girl, your dinner, your souvenir, your lamp, your seventh grade teacher, your seventh grade fantasy, your soccer ball, your shower curtain, your TV, your paperweight, your goldfish, your fridge, your chattering teeth, your sunglasses, your relationship, your kid sister, your trash, your life, your car, the Civic Coupe from Honda. If you suffer from heartburn like I do, you've probably tried every remedy on the market. My doctor suggested I try Gaviscon. You see, before Gaviscon, I couldn't do this without propping myself up with pillows. Lying down meant stomach acid burning up my chest. Gaviscon starts to relieve the burning on contact and forms a long-lasting barrier to help keep acid down every time. So no matter what position you're in, you can feel better fast or your money back. That's the Gaviscon guarantee. In Europe, there's a place with a chocolate heart called Switzerland. Switzerland has a chocolate heart called Lindt. Lindt has a chocolate heart called Lindor. And Lindor has a soft, melting heart surrounded by a shell of sumptuous milk chocolate. So, when you break its shell, Lindor's soft, melting filling spreads and goes straight to your heart. Lindor from Lindt, exquisite Swiss chocolate since 1845. There is a place called paradise. I have touched it, and it has touched me. I know this place exists, for I have seen the beauty of its islands, felt the warmth of its beaches, and heard my name whispered along its trees in a voice as gentle as the breeze. Leonard. Leonard. Oh, oh, bummer. Leonard. Dreaming of a tropical island getaway? Florida's Lee Island Coast. Call for your free visitor's guide to the Fort Myers and Sanibel area. She wasn't vain because she wasn't particularly good looking. Intriguing Canadians. 67 year old architect, 38 year old wife, and 18 year old lover. The sinners, saints, and dreamers that shaped our nation. He didn't just stumble into power, he was constantly searching for it. An original biography series. Your father was murdered, your mother took her life. Faces of History, every Monday at 10 Eastern, 11 Pacific on History Television. Brought to you by Royal Bank Financial Group. Who were the human torpedoes? What was Japan's secret weapon? How did a dead vagrant save lives? Unravel the clues. Enter the man who never was. Examine the hidden documents. Herein lay the seeds of a classic deception. Discover the new evidence. It was supposed to remain concealed in the archives for at least half a century. Secrets of World War II. Tuesday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on History Television. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues.
can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. All right, you guys, let's do what he said. Let's play our game. We can do it. Oh, shut up. Well, there's nothing more I can tell you. You've earned your place here. You know it, I know it. Now all of America knows it. And tonight, you can make the Russians know it. If you play our game, check hard, skate and pass. Skate and pass, you can beat them. I tell you, they are ripe. You can beat them. Whatever it costs us personally to get here, it was worth it. Don't blow it. You'll take it to your grave. You were born to be a player, each and every one of you. You were meant to be here. This moment is yours. blue lines, the United States and the Soviet Union. The excitement, the tension building, the Olympic Center filling the capacity, the face value of a top ticket for tonight's game, $67.20. Outside, they're exchanging hands at three times the face value. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels, along with Ken Dryden. It should be a great night. I'm sure there are a lot of people in this building who do not know the difference between a blue line and a closed line. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter, because what we have at hand, the rarest of sporting events, an event that needs no build-up, no superfluous adjectives. In a political or nationalistic sense, I'm sure this game is being viewed with varying perspectives, but manifestly, it is a hockey game. The United States and the Soviet Union on a sheet of ice in Lake Placid, New York. into the first period. The United States and the Soviet Union scoreless. A look at Viktor Tikhanov, the head coach of what many consider to be the world's best hockey team. It's Wells to Pavlich. Pavlich's shot is saved by Trediak and back comes Balderas the other way for the Soviet Union. Helmut Balderas in over the blue line on the right side but losing the puck. The Soviets though getting it back. It's Fedosov. Number two up ahead to Malta. Malta picked up at the blue line. The Americans doing that well thus far against the Soviets. Buzz Schneider losing it out to the point. Slap shot, and it was deflected in from the point. The Soviet Union takes a one to nothing lead. Kasatinov's slap shot was deflected in past Craig, and the Soviet Union leads one to nothing at the 9 12 mark of the first period. All right, get it back, get it back. Come on, Johnson, don't spot him too. Six minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first period. Golikov for the Soviet Union. Up ahead to Makarov, picked up by Pavlik. Taking it away to the U.S. Pavlich up ahead to Schneider. Shot shot goes in! Boy Schneider scoring for the United States to tie the game 1-1. With 5.57 to go in the first period. Not at all the type of goal that you would expect Frediac to give up. The face-off now in the American. 
working in. Harlemont with a wrist shot and a great glove save by Jim Craig. And obviously more pressure on that man's shoulders tonight than on any other. Jim Craig with a great save, a 40-footer by Harlamov, and Craig able to glove it, so the game remains tied at 1-1. Golikov passing over to his brother, number 25, and Makarov shot, the save by Craig. Golikov comes back the other way for the Soviet Union. Golikov, number 23, leaving it to Makarov. He tried to get it back to Golikov, and gets it back and scores. Deflected off the American defenseman, and the Soviets take the lead 2-1. to one. 22 seconds remaining now. First period, the Soviet Union still on top, 2-1. to one. The Americans trying to tie it up. You think a prayer would help? Frankly, I'd rather have a beer. Come on, what can happen in eight seconds? Wait. Back come the Americans, Davy Christian. Long shot, the easy save by Freddie at the first of his With one second to play. Mark Johnson tying the game. And the U.S. and the Soviet Union tied 2-2. Time has expired on the game clock. As we looked up, it was one second remaining. The goal will count. Mark Johnson, after Christian stopped, had initially been saved by Trediak, tying the game. So the United States hockey team blown out at Madison Square Garden just two weeks ago, 10 to 3, tied with the Soviets after the first 20 minutes. Forget your wallet. You never have your wallet. You pay for the dogs. That's exactly right. Hard. Robert. The kids are in over their heads. You just can't keep winning games like that in the last few seconds. Why? You just can't. George, you know what I heard? I heard that at the end of the game, whoever gets the most goals wins. He could be right. Funny. Funny. You know, if the Russians do get the next goal, you can't play catch-up hockey with these guys. Do you want to sit with George? No, I don't want to sit with George. I'll pay for the hot dog. As we start the second period now, a change for the Soviet Union as Vladimir Mushkin becomes the new goalie after Trediak had given up two in the first period. Five minutes into the second period now, the crowd still relatively quiet. Most of the action in this period thus far has been in the American end, as is the face-off here. Parlamont. Number 17, the veteran. And Harlemont has to bring it back. And a whistle. And a penalty coming up against the United States. The first penalty against the Americans as referee Carl Gustav Kaisler sends John Harrington to the penalty box. Two minutes for holding. So the United States trying to ward off the Soviet Union thus far in the second period. And now they'll have to skate shorthanded against the vaunted Soviet power play. So the Soviets with a man advantage here in the second period. 50 seconds remaining now in the penalty to Harrington. Baker in control. Baker losing it. Krutov. Krutov. Up ahead to Malsev. Malsev on a breakaway. Malsev gets a wide break to give the Soviets the lead. So the Americans with a chance to control the center ice. And then Krutov able to get it over to Malsev in on the breakaway. And the Soviets move back on top 3-2. The United States skating a man shy and paying the price. The Americans with the puck. Davey Silk out of his own end. Up ahead to Harrington. Johnny on a breakaway. But his shot goes wide. Harrington missing a golden opportunity to tie the game. And the Soviets able to clear their own end. So the Americans with their best scoring chance here in the second period, but come up empty, it's still 3-2. Waning moments, second period. The Soviet Union still leading 3-2. Walter's goal, the only scoring here in the period. You see the clock as the seconds tick down. Washington in chase, along with Kasakhanov. Seven seconds remaining in the period. The Soviets try to come back the other way. The Americans keeping in, but time will run out. That's the end of the second period. 
the second period really dominated by the Soviet Union. The Americans actually lucky that the Soviets only cashed in once. Still in the game, but trailing. As we go to the third, it's 3-2 Russia. Almost over. One more period. One more game. And it's done. So's my play in Korea. Come on. No, I mean it, Buck. Oh, I'll never top this. Even if I turned pro and won the Stanley Cup, I could never equal this. You know, this, this whole past year, Herb taught me more about life than about hockey. I feel good. I finally made a decision. But boy, I'd love to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Research. In your new land? Yes, please, this way. To help determine the best investments. It's still an important part of the way we manage our mutual funds for Canadian investors. Because for over 75 years, we've never forgotten. It's your money. I'm going to recommend investing. Scudder Funds of Canada. Call 1 800 850 Fund. Your baby, your diapers, your rattle, your bottle, your pediatrician. Your pacifier, your babysitter, your baby shoes, your teddy bear, your art collection, your in-laws, your lawn, your last date, your bank account, your pumpkin, your toy chest, your job, your clock, your wedding cake, your rubber ducky, your family, your family car. The Civic Sedan from Honda. You know, nothing enriches your life like the world's most beautiful music. Now, Time Life Music brings you a magnificent new collection, 100 masterpieces of classical music at a remarkable low price. Imagine owning the 100 best-loved melodies of all time. From the concert hall to the movie screen, this is music that will live forever. One hundred masterpieces of classical music, more than six hours of superb digital recordings. This is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to own all the great classics in one complete collection. more than six full hours of breathtaking digital sound. One hundred masterpieces of classical music. If you're not completely satisfied, Time Life will refund every penny of your purchase price. So please, call now and enjoy a lifetime of the world's greatest music. To order 100 masterpieces, call 1-800-621-2112. That's 1-800-621-2112. Or send $29.99 for five cassettes or five CDs, plus $5.95 shipping and handling to 100 Masterpieces, Department 1, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. I'm Lloyd Robertson, inviting you to join me Sundays for War Stories. This week, the gripping rescue of an American F-16 fighter pilot shot down over Bosnia. 
how his family, his comrades, even his president, never lost hope he would survive. I am very concerned. We are following that situation closely. That's Missing in Action, the Scott O'Grady story, Sunday night at 7, Eastern and Pacific, on War Stories. Miracle on Ice is brought to you by Scudder Funds of Canada. At Scudder, we never forget it's your money. History on Film's presentation of Miracle on Ice continues. As we start the third period, Jim Craig has gone all the way in the net for the United States. For the Soviet Union, Vladimir Mushkin took over after Freddie Ackett played the first period. The only scoring in the second period, the goal by Maltev. That's the difference in the game as we start the third period. The Soviet Union on top, 3-2. to two. The Americans in white, the Soviets in red.
State hockey team. Average age, 22. Herb Brooks, head coach. Craig Patrick, assistant coach. Unknown, totally anonymous, a week and a half ago. They're still undefeated. They've got three points now. They've got their fate in their own hands. They'll take on Finland Sunday. The USA, USA champ.
listening to a Hollywood producer with this script, you'd have been thrown out on your ear. recognition of their incredible performance at the 13th Olympic Games at Lake Placid. This motion picture is dedicated to the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. Here, receiving their gold medals, the members of that team. Jim Craig, the goaltender, fulfilled another dream, going on to play professional hockey in his hometown of Boston. John Harrington also turned pro, but went overseas to play in Switzerland. Dave Silk from Massachusetts, signed with the New York Rangers of the National Hockey League. Mike Ramsey, also signed with the NHL with Buffalo. Eric Strobel returned to the University of Minnesota to resume his studies. Jack O'Callaghan went on to play professional hockey in Chicago. Dave Christian from War Road, Minnesota, whose father played on the 1960 gold medal winning hockey team, signed with the Winnipeg Jets of the NHL. Neil Broughton, like Strobel, returned to school at the University of Minnesota. Phil Verkota was another who decided to play professionally overseas in Finland. Steve Janizak, the reserve goalie, signed with the NHL's Colorado Rockies. Buzz Schneider, the only member of this team to play in the 1976 Olympics, went on to play hockey in Switzerland. Bill Baker, the defenseman from Grand Rapids, Minnesota, signed with the Montreal Canadiens. Steve Kristoff also signed a pro contract with the Minnesota North Stars. Mark Pavlich was another who went to play in Switzerland as a member of the Lugano team. Mark Wells, who played college hockey at Bowling Green, signed with the New York Rangers. Ken Morrow experienced yet another great thrill, joining the New York Islanders who went on to win the Stanley Cup. Rob McClanahan from St. Paul, Minnesota, turned pro with the Buffalo Sabres. Bob Suter opened a sporting goods store in his hometown of Madison, Wisconsin. Mark Johnson, also from Madison, began his pro career one week after the Olympics with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Captain Mike Arruzzioni, who scored the winning goal against the Soviet Union, having experienced the ultimate, kept his promise and retired from hockey. Wednesday. He was a man who had a dream, a dream of equality amongst all mankind. Paul Winfield and Emmy Award winner Cecily Tyson in History on Film's special three-part presentation of the Martin Luther King Jr. story, King. Part of Black History Month, Wednesday, 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, on History Television.
With me now is a hockey fan, a hockey analyst, and someone who makes his living talking about the game he loves. Gord Stellick was the former general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs and is now a television and radio broadcaster. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Ed. The game, the final, I guess the whole series really, mm -hmm. Uh, has been called the greatest upset in the history of sport. Is that a mega exaggeration or does it come close to the truth? Well, south of the border probably comes closer to the truth than, than up here. I, I don't know about that. It certainly was a Davy and Goliath story about the, um, you know, the American college kids against the big Russian machine of uh, polished professionals. I think a big thing is the fact the movie or the Olympics were set in Lake Placid, which helped just make it the great all-American story. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's the greatest upset of all time. How how interested were were you? I mean, were you in Canada at that point? Uh, were Canadians watching, or were they just too busy rooting for the Canadians? Well, it kind of crept up on us. You know, the strange thing was uh, when it happened. I started in Canada, then I was down in Fort Lauderdale on reading week, so I got to experience both sides. And <laughs> you know, I was in university at the time, and you got to keep in mind the climate back then. So we hated the Russians here. In 1972 it happened. The Soviets. Yes, the Soviets, yeah. excuse me. 1976, the Canada Cup, we'd won. Then in 1978, they'd kicked their butts in the Challenge Cup. This Russian team that went on the Olympics had beat the top NHL players. Um, a year later, we had this tour of uh, uh, Soviet teams against NHL teams. They were in Philadelphia, and the, the great line about, they're going home. They walked off the ice in the middle because they thought the Philadelphia Flyers were beating up on their Russian team. And we didn't like the Flyers, but we were cheering that back in Canada. So the same thing happened here. We found probably a very hokey about the, uh, the American-style 1980 Winter Olympics. But unlike Carl Lewis, who we booed when he you know, carried the flag and found it cheesy, <laughs> this we really got caught up in because the, the, the Russians, the Soviets, were the enemy back then. Was, was this game also sort of a, a kind of landmark, almost like Tiger Woods, where non-golfers started watching golf? Uh, back in 1980, were non-hockey fans uh, watching hockey for the first time? You know, it really was. I mean, I think in that sense, there's a benchmark. And unlike Tiger Woods, who you knew about for a number of years, and you got set and you previewed that he was going to be at the Masters Golf Tournament, again, no one was expecting this American team to beat the Russians. So the Olympics start. And slowly the Americans start doing, you know, winning games and going at it. And so it's not just one big game, there's a process. So it's like afterwards they reap the benefits in that a lot of players in the NHL right now are American kids that remember Miracle on Ice. They were seven, eight, nine years old, and that was their big moment that turned them on to, uh, to hockey. In terms of the Canadian, uh, they did their, I guess, miracle, so to speak, in 1948. Did, did you, was that ever brought up as a type of comparison? Well, the, the TV wasn't as good in 1948, <laughs> I, and I wasn't alive in 1948. But I don't mean you. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, there's a lot of great Canadian stories. There's the Trail Smoke Eaters in the 1950s. Uh, I mean, that's what it used to be. You got the, the Whitby Dunlops, that you got a gang together from a small town that went on to represent Canada in the Olympics. And there's some great, those are two uh, of the great stories of guys, uh, little teams from little towns that went on and won a gold medal. So this may be a sort of more the TV era and a lot more recent, but I think certainly there's a lot to be proud of Canadian history-wise when it comes to Olympics hockey. What was it about the Soviets, especially, let's say, going back to 1980? What, what was it that made them so great? They had what, won, I think, four out of the five golds in the previous Olympics. Mm -hmm. Why were they so spectacular? Well, first, we always argued in Canada, we didn't get to send our best players. So, and, which was true, and that's why we weren't participating because our pros weren't allowed to go, uh, you know, against quote Russian pros who uh, were deemed amateurs but were really pros. But the one thing we saw in 1972 and carried through, and they and they talked in the North North American style, the skating, the puck handling skills, whether where we played more physical and some other things, they they were incredible in that they would take the zone, and it's, if there wasn't a clear shot we would probably take a shot and dump it in. They'd go back, retreat, everyone come back out the red line, and they get the set play, go in again. They took choice, st uh, choice shots rather than just, you know, haphazard shots, and there just was a skill level they brought and a beauty to the game that has really benefited North American hockey since then. The goalie, uh, they had this, what? Vladislav Tretiak. Bigger than life goalie. Yeah, yeah, he was. And, 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 the, and the weird thing about 1982, you know, sometimes you gotta get lucky. When it, you know, like, it's, there's, uh, there's skill and there's a lot of things, and, and this U.S. team, um, as the movie shows, they, they got waxed by this Russian team about three weeks before the Olympics, killed. Yeah. And so that's why no one gave them a chance. And a big thing was Vladislav Tretiak had been the one constant 
for the uh, Soviet team in the 1970s. He'd surprised us in 72 in the, in the Summit Series, and all along, I mean, he's the only Soviet player in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's how good he was. 1980, he has a very, he has a very average Olympics for the Soviet team, and the, even so, he gets pulled in the big game against the, uh, the Americans, which is unheard of. The big hero gets yeah, taken the, out of the, the game? Yeah, the Trechiak gets taken out of the game, so you wonder if, if almost that, that thing happened a little bit, a questionable coaching decision, and also Trechiak just for the one time in a big series didn't seem to be on his game the way he had, so they, got, they caught a break there. What about coming up? Next week, you know, the hockey will be starting uh, in Japan, and I guess Canada plays uh, if, around Sweden, the 13th USA, or 14th. Yeah, they're gonna what, does Canada have a big chance? Are the Soviets, now that they're the Russians, are they out of the picture altogether? Uh, who should we be looking for well, doing I, what? I think uh, Canada and the States, uh, are, I think, are the two best teams. Sweden's going to be good. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the Russian team has been is not as strong as it was back in 1980. Uh, some of the other countries, like Czechoslovakia, has been hurt because they split up. So the uh, the new world order has um, has hurt the hockey team in that you're you know splitting up the uh, the top talent into two countries rather than one country. I do think it's going to be outstanding. I mean, for the one time in modern history, we have the best players in the world playing at the Olympics. But the downside is there never will be another miracle on ice. There'll be no more Davy and Goliath stories like there was back in 1980 when it's a bunch of college kids taking on the creme de la creme of the Soviet Union. Because now, what? We the best are allowed to play. The pros can play. Back then, Bobby Orr couldn't play. I mean, uh, Guy Lafleur couldn't play. Mike Bossy. Anybody that was making a professional income playing hockey, which is any decent North American player, because they're playing in the NHL or, or a minor league, was ineligible for the Olympics. And that was the farce. So, so they were pros. But the guys on the, on the Soviet team who were making good money in the Soviet Army, it was just a ruse. They were all lieutenants and colonels. Uh, <laughs> they, they were deemed amateurs. And that was always the problem. Now it's just no holds barred. If you're the best players in the world, you're at the Winter Olympics. So no David and Goliath, as you say. Uh, not in hockey, unfortunately. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. That's our look at history and history on film. I'm Ann Medina. Thanks for being with us. I love being a VON nurse.